Bad. Soon, one tank commander emerged as a leader among the men of the 761st. Staff Sergeant Reuben Rivers' unparalleled bravery in the face of battle gained him the respect of both his fellow tankers and his white commander. William loved that man. He was, he was quiet. He didn't speak too much. But he was serious all the time. He was a leader. But on November 16, 1944, during an advance toward the town of Goobling, France, the vehicle Rivers was commanding hit an anti-tank mine. A metal shard from the damaged turret had slashed his right leg, severely wounding him. His bone, you could see his thigh bone, it was just that bad. They told him that you got a million dollar wound, man, you can go home now. And he said, I'm not going anywhere. Just fix me up, doc. Ooh, this looks pretty bad. I got to get you out of here. I said I'm not going anywhere. At least let me give you something for the pain. Don't need it. What's the situation here? There's no situation, Captain. There's nothing. Captain, this soldier's hurt pretty bad. We got to get him out of here. There's nothing. Rivers, you get your butt back on that Jeep and over to the aid station. That's an order, soldier. Can't do that, Captain. You're gonna be needing me around. He refused to go. He knew what he was up against. Ruben was a tough man. He would not give up. That's the kind of guy he was. He was half Cherokee and black. And uh, he said, my black part tell me to go with my Cherokee part tell me to stay. You get those minority bloods together, you got some real stuff. You got some heat that you better back off because you're not going to put that fire out. Rivers fought on, even when his wound became infected and in danger of gangrene. He would not lead the men of Company A. The warriors are seen by the scars. If you get in and get scarred up, that means you've been belly. That was his way of living. Three days later, on November 19th, Company A's tanks advanced toward their next objective, the town of Burgeltroff, France. Dug in, heavily armed, and waiting for them are elements of the crack German 11th Panzer Division. Floyd Dade fought alongside Rivers on that day. The 4th Armored, they had been in there, and they got ran out. So the Germans were digging in. But before the tanks could even reach the town, they are confronted by an overwhelming enemy force. The German had anti-tank guns and tanks dug in. Panzer! Now, we could outrun that German tank, but we couldn't stand a fight with him. Williams keys the radio frantically and orders his crews to fall back and take cover. Withdraw! Withdraw from your positions! Move back! Move back! Rivers ignores the command. He and his crew spot the German tank positions and in a daring maneuver advance on them, covering the other tankers' safe withdrawal. and his crew are killed instantly. He put himself out there. He put himself out there. He saved a lot of lives by putting himself out there. And he went down swinging. Two days after the battle, Captain Williams, though aware of the Army's unwritten policy of denying black soldiers the highest award for courage under fire, recommends that Sergeant Reuben Rivers receive the Medal of Honor. He recommended it. But he said after he recommended, they just sort of put it aside, didn't mean a thing. Though Rivers' courage and sacrifice on November 14, 1944, unquestionably demonstrated actions that went above and beyond the call of duty, he was, after all, a black man in a segregated army.